Forgiveness isn't saying, oh, that was right. Forgiveness is saying, God, that was wrong or whatever happened, but I give it to you instead of holding on to it. Unforgiveness is like poison that you hold on to, expecting the other person to get hurt. And really, it's just like an anchor on your soul. Are, are you willing to pray with us and to say, Jesus, tonight, I want to make a choice to let you be the Lord of my life, to make you the Lord of my life, to, to no longer do things my way, but to do things your way. Are you ready to do that? Not for us. Lorena, the word the Lord is giving to me right now to tell you is that you're like a lost sheep and he wants you to be found tonight. Break off of her mind all demonic power right now. I command every spirit that's lying to her mind and trying to deceive her off right now in Jesus' name. Oh. Ahorita, ahorita voy. No, it's okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's very yeah, interesting. Thank you. Sorry. Right in the middle of prayer. No, I, this, this just happened. As soon as the Lord moves, the devil tries to stop it. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. And I wanted to give a quick intro. What you're about to see is an encounter that Tess and I had after a uh, time of preaching. And um, so we were walking back to our cars. Everybody on the team was walking back to the cars. And um, we thought that we had dropped a gimbal battery on the way to this preaching event. And so Tess and I said we were going to try to um, trace our steps. And we ended up uh, talking to this woman. And uh, the battery wasn't uh, lost. It ended up being in the front seat of somebody's car. And uh, the batteries are a little bit more expensive for the gimbal that we have. So, um, you know, we didn't want to just take off. But the Lord actually used it in order for us to reach this woman. And it was a really powerful event and a really powerful um, ministry encounter with her. So uh, pray it blesses you and please watch all the way through. Thanks. I have I have Bible. since I was a kid I was and I've always been so like um, so uh, into religions, you know, like I grew up like that. It just, you know, lately I haven't been into religions, but I do believe in God. Well, Jesus is the only way. There's not many gods. There's not many I know, ways I know. to God. He's the only Are you angry about things in life? I feel like the Lord's telling me there's yeah. anger. Yeah. <laughs> because the eyes are the window to the soul. And what demons do is they overlay people's experience. So today Jesus wants to destroy really the work of the devil in your life, but you have to let it go. You have to forgive. You have to, you have to give up the bitterness. Because here's the thing, forgiveness isn't saying what happened is okay. Forgiveness isn't saying, oh, that was right. Forgiveness is saying, God, that was wrong or whatever happened, but I give it to you instead of holding on to it. Unforgiveness is like poison that you hold on to, expecting the other person to get hurt. And really, it's just like an anchor on your soul. Who, who do you need to forgive? First of all, myself. What did you do? Mm, I mean, a lot of things. Um, do you feel shame about them? Were yeah, they were they yeah. sexual? Do you feel like you were used? Do you feel like you gave yourself away? I mean, what? Yeah, two, two. You know, I made a lot of mistakes, and uh, and I do know someone wrong. Regardless, that sometimes we want to like like excuse ourselves for things, but in deep inside we know it's wrong. I'm you know? Yeah. Well, Lorena, the best thing you could do okay. even tonight is to see this as a sign. Like I, the Lord know, literally. I have, I have. If I tell you all the things that happened to me just to get here on the way, I find a lady on the way. Okay, I almost ran out of gas. So I find a lady who is very Christian. Like I felt so much like my mother died two years ago and I felt so, so strong like that my mother is with me and I got so many messages like that she's with me. <laughs> And I, and like, she's trying to, to tell me, she's telling me to, to get into God. And now, you know, like, you gave me this bill and it's so powerful, you know? Well, the thing that a person has to do when God gives them a sign is they have to respond. And I'm going to tell you something very, very, uh, very um, specific. Yeah. I'm doing some things and like I'm, I'm trying to put myself a goal to make a million dollars this year and I know it, it sounds impossible but a lot of times I have reached a lot of things that are possible 
I, it like looks impossible, but I still reach them. Like one year, I challenged myself to buy my house cash, and I did it. So this year I did that, and, but this is telling me, you know, it's a like it's not a million dollars. Yeah, you it's see, it's a million on on Jesus. The, so this this touched me so deep, and I know it's another sign. The Bible says that what's a profit, a man or a woman, to gain the entire world or forfeit their soul? What would someone give in exchange for their soul? God wants you serving Him. The things of this world pass away. You have no security apart from Jesus. You could work to make a million dollars, and if you got into a car accident and died, all your hard work would be Actually, nothing. Actually, it happened to me. I worked so so hard in this country, you have no idea. You know, I was like 32 and I could be retired. You know, I had my house paid. I had some businesses and I had a lot of things. I could like retire at 32 and then I lose everything. Everything. How, how did you lose it? I, I almost lose my, my life because of working so much and so hard, I almost died, literally. So then I lose all my money trying to get my health back. And like, thank goodness I got my health back and I didn't get the money. And I know I can get that and more way easier because I now I have more space and whatever, whatever. But, but that shows you that your life is more valuable than money. I know, I know. I mean, so now soul, I know, so trust me. your soul me. is more valuable than I anything know. you can and gain in all this And say world. it so clear and it, and it talks to me like so clear and loud. It's just Andrew, he's saying he found it. It's in the seat. Oh. So we were looking for something that uh, was lost, but apparently it was you because it was in our seat all along. Our friend found it for us in our seat. So you see, God had us pass by. I know. Lorena, for you to, Thank you, so much. you have to, but here's the key. When's the last time you prayed and said, Jesus, I need you to be the Lord of my life. I need you to forgive me of my sins. You know what? Have you ever done it? Have you ever said, Jesus? I, I must... always, I always prayed. In, in the last years, I haven't prayed like to Jesus because I have like, I know there is a higher power, but sometimes you like, I, I think, I feel like all my life I've been like reaching like, who is a higher power, you know, like this religion, this, uh, whatever, you know, and then I study, the more that I study, the more confused I get. So then I just, it's like, I know there is a higher power. Okay? So let me put it to you like this real quick. So have you ever lied? But today I had to pray, you know, for so many things, you know, the, even to make it, you know, with no gas. And you know what? I made it to, to, to the gas station with no gas at all. Lorena, you know? have, it's Lorena, right? Yes. Have you ever lied before? A lot of times, a lot of times. What is, a, well, when we lie, what does that make us guilty of being in, to God? What's the word? What do you call somebody if they lie to you? Liar. Have you ever stolen anything mm. in your life? I mean, the gods I would guess, see. yeah, I mean, I guess sometimes. What, what do you yeah. call this somebody that steals? A stealer. Or a thief. A thief, yeah, so sorry. So you're, that, you're that stealer yeah, is yeah. That, that's the a Pittsburgh. Tail. So. <laughs> You're guilty of being a liar and a thief. Yes, have you ever hated anybody? Yeah. Jesus said, if you have hatred in your heart, it's like committing murder to God because God sees hatred as the beginnings of murder and unchecked hatred does lead to murder. Have you ever lusted after somebody or had sex outside of marriage, outside of the covenant yeah. of marriage? Yeah. Jesus said, if we even have lust in our heart towards somebody that's not our spouse, God sees us as being guilty of adultery. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Not really. You've never like something bad and you say no, Jesus. No, no, of course not. Okay. Of course not. I so, actually I don't I don't ever like to like swear on anything. Okay. On anything. So apart from those those are four of the ten we went over five, but four of the ten commandments you admitted to being guilty of. The here's the thing. If God were to judge you just on the standard of you being innocent or guilty of breaking his law, would you be innocent or guilty? Guilty. Heaven or hell? Uh, hell, for sure, for sure. Does that concern you? Mm, used to, and lately I feel like I'm so sure that I'm going there that... So then the question becomes, if God were to ask you why he should let you into heaven, what would you say? Why should God let you in? Wow. That's the, mil the million dollar question. And if you don't have an answer, it says something. Imagine you fell in love with a, a guy, maybe you have in the past, but let's say it's the right guy and you love him and you look at him and say, do you love me? And he can't answer yes or no, and he doesn't know, that says it all. So when we can't answer where we'll spend eternity, that shows 
that in our heart we know we're not right with God. So tonight, God is bearing witness in your heart, Lorena, that you're not right with Him, but you can be made right with Him, not through your good deeds, not through going to a priest or a pastor, but through the cross. What Jesus did, do you know what Jesus did for you on the cross? He took your sin on His shoulders. He took the, my sin, her sin, all of our sin on His shoulders, and He took the judgment of God, the wrath of God, He paid for your and my sin in full. And he says, if you will believe in me, put your trust in me and turn directions, turn away from, turn away from living life your way and come and live life my way and put your faith in what he did for you on the cross. God will literally come and he'll forgive you. He'll wash you clean. You'll have no permanent record with God. God will literally put his righteousness around you, wash you clean through his shed blood. Not through your works. See, in Catholicism, it's by works. You got to, okay, you did this. You got to go do this. Show God that you're worthy. No, the Bible says it's by grace you're saved. Imagine you were in a debt that you could not pay. Let's say you're in a $10 billion debt and somebody that you hurt and you sinned against said, I love you so much, even though you hurt me and sinned against me, I'm going to pay your debt because they had the ability to. That's what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. Now, if you have a check, you have to take it to the bank and deposit it. You can know about Jesus in your mind. You can be right next to Jesus. The check can be in your pocket, but until you deposit it into your account, there, there's not a transfer. When you deposit what Jesus did for you into your heart by faith, God comes and he gives you his righteousness and he cleanses you and that's why god has you here today to listen to this I know. god I has know you that. Trust me, I know that. so are you in phoenix do you live in phoenix no i i came i came from la i live in la you came just uh to sell um yeah. food and different beverages and yeah. uh stuff so uh you want to trade numbers with my wife since yeah you guys you are get... beautiful couple. thank you and we'll pray with you right now but um just because we'll have to go soon. You'll probably you have so to go soon. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, 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 no, I, I highly appreciate it. Yeah. That's calling you. He What's is. Your phone number? 562? In, in the Bible. Jesus told the story about how there's going to be a wedding feast. And he invites all He was actually a baptized. There was a baptized. There was a lady that I don't know, and she was, she was baptizing her baby. And I don't know these people. In your dream? In my dream. So the, here's the bigger issue, though. Because God is greater than your, your mom and loves you more than your mom could ever love you. And so God is here today and God has been here all along looking for you to give him access to your heart. Are you willing to pray with us and to say, Jesus, tonight I want to make a choice to let you be the Lord of my life, to make you the Lord of my life, to, to no longer do things my way, but to do things your way. Are you ready to do that? Not for us and not for your sake. It would have to be that you know God is calling you and you're ready to pray and say, God, you see, the thing with God is we want to come to God like with our own key. You know, just like imagine somebody came to your door of your home and they stuck their key in and they expected it to open. You'd say, hold on, hold on. You don't come into my home without coming through me. And in the same way with Jesus, you don't get into God's home without coming to him through, through Jesus, through his door. So it has to be his way. But it also has to be a choice that you make, right? God, God, God's not going to handcuff you right now and force you to come to Him. So if your heart isn't ready, you need to say, you know what, my heart's not ready. Actually, I'm ready to tell you that. It's not that my heart is not ready. But I know if I tell you that, I know, and, and you know, Jesus knows that I'm not going to like fulfill that. But I do know that I have to start processing my life. Oh, you follow Jesus? Right, well, it's okay. I just want to say I love you. Do you follow him? Okay. Would you want to pray asking God to help you come to that place? Yes, please. Okay. Thank okay. you so much. Okay, so let's do it right now. Are you ready? Thank you so much. Yes, Can I you. put our hands on our yes, on your you. shoulder, God? Thank you. I pray for Lorena right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I pray. How about we... Uh, Move to the side because then you'll be you'll be able to go over in a second. It just seems like back here is better. Okay. Less noisy and uh, more privacy. You know why I couldn't hear any noise? Huh? But you, I believe it or not, what you're telling me is like I'm processing like so deep. Like every single word that you're telling me, 
You know, it's so powerful. You guys are so powerful. Okay. You know, God but is so powerful. God's your, powerful. Your, yeah. your word is so powerful. You it's know? it's him speaking so, to us. Not, believe it or not, I could I could not hear any noise at all. Praise God. But your words. Okay, well, Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for Lorena right now. Lord, you're calling her. Lorena, the word the Lord is giving to me right now to tell you is that you're like a lost sheep and he wants you to be found tonight. He doesn't want you to be lost anymore. So often in life, people that are lost keep going from place to place looking to get back to where they need to go. But the truth is that Jesus Christ tonight has come to find you. He's come to find you in the midst of your lostness. So Lord Jesus, I pray for Lorena. Yes, I pray that you would break off of her mind all demonic power right now. I command every spirit that's lying to her mind and trying to deceive her off right now in Jesus' name. Oh. Ahorita, ahorita voy. No, it's okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's very yeah, interesting. Sorry. Thank you. Right sorry. in the middle of prayer. No, I, this, this just happened. As soon as the Lord moves, the devil tries to stop it. But I think, uh, I think he said they, they could keep the change. I think is what yeah. he said. So that's a blessing for you too. <laughs> if that's what, if that's what he said. Um, so the Lord can bless you even in the midst of, of this. So God, I just pray that you would lift off of Lorena, every spirit that's not of you, everything that's blinding her, her understanding and deafening her heart, I command you in the name of Jesus. God, I pray, Lord, that you would, the word God is telling me, Lorena, is for the spirits that are over your life to be lifted, you have to forgive whoever you're not forgiving. But right now, we're just gonna lead you in a prayer to ask God to begin to move in your life. Will you pray this with me and say, Lord Jesus Christ, pray out loud with me. Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, I'm sorry. Can I give? You, can I? Can I ask you for a petition? Yeah. Like, I've been fighting for my son's um, custody, and mm. he's so crazy to come with me. But for some reason, he's so stuck. Like, how old is I, he? He's 13. He's so stuck. I feel like there is like I don't know what it is. Like I fight for it, and I go to the court, and nothing is moving on. Is his dad dangerous at all? No. Is his no, dad no, bad? No, no, no. He's you know. No. Is he, I mean, is it, doesn't does look he like drink? It. Does he smoke no, marijuana? No, 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 no. Did you get no, you but and your, he? But he, you know, his his weakness is that he was he unfaithful like in, to you. Maybe, but that's over. I don't care about that. Anymore. How long but have you been divorced? That, uh, well, we've been separated for many years, many, many oh. years. But the thing is that. The only thing is that he's into depression so much, you know? And my, my son, he's so crazy to come with me. And he's just so stuck. No matter what I do, I go to the judges So and this is the first thing God will require of you. If anything's gonna move right in your life, you have to be in the center of God's will. It's not gonna, God won't just do it because if you're out of God's I will, that. so you have, you have to step into God's That's will. You have yes, to let Jesus pull you. So, I feel, I feel, I've been feeling, God is telling me, he's not going back to you until you're ready for him. Okay, so pray this with me. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. Tonight, tonight, I need an encounter with you. I need an encounter with you. Please open my heart. Please open my heart. And help me. And help me. To give you. To give you. Whatever is in the way. Whatever is in the way. I need to become. I need to become. A person. A person. That can know you. That can know you. And be forgiven by you. And be forgiven by you. Help me to believe. Help me to believe. That you died on the cross. That you died on the cross. For my sins. For my sins. And that you rose from the dead. And that and that you rose from the dead. So that I could have life. So I can have life. A new life. A new life. Please help me, Jesus. Please help me, Jesus. Keep the devil off of my mind. Keep the devil off my mind. And off of my life. And off of my life. Help me to make the right choices. Help me to make the right choices. And help me to give you my heart. And help me to give you my heart. And total surrender. And total surrender. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. And we're going to pray for you, God. We're lifting up this situation yes. that's on Lorena's heart, God. Lord, she already feels like you're telling her that in order for the things to move forward, she has to let you make her into the woman that she needs to be. So we pray that tonight she would understand that you are calling her to become your daughter, which is infinitely more important than even the relationship she had with her mother, because you're God and you knew her before she was born. 
God, you knew her a thousand years before her, her mother was ever conceived. You knew her before creation, God. And I pray tonight that you would reach into Lorena's heart and remove the nails, the daggers, the pain, and remove the stubbornness, God, and remove the rebellion, all the different things that you don't want there, Lord. I pray that you would remove them and that she would encounter you tonight and that she would remember that when she came to Super Bowl this year, it was a, because she thought she was coming to make money, but really you had her coming because you wanted her soul to be found. God, that, that what the devil maybe does to try to ensnare people and just the busyness of life, God, you're working even behind the scenes. And I pray that tonight you would show her yes, Lord. that you love her, that you're calling her, and that she can be forgiven, that she doesn't have to even hold the burden of sin against herself because if she'll come to you through your shed blood, you don't hold her sins against her. And so if you're God, like you are, what you say goes. <laughs> and she can't change it even. But help her to come to that place where she lays down her life and she lays down her sin at your feet yes, in Jesus' name. Yes, God, we just thank you for Lorena. Lord, I pray that you would move in her heart. Yes, God, her, Holy her Spirit, life, come God. right now. I pray that you would bring healing to her heart and you would give her understanding, Lord, of what it really means to trust you and to surrender to you. Yes, and God. To let you be Lord, God, when we give you control, there's freedom. When we let go of control, there's freedom, there's deliverance, there's hope, there's healing. So, God, I pray that she would just let go of control. She would let go of bitterness, of anger, of unforgiveness, God, and she would just give you control, God. I pray that she would trade her burden that's heavy for your burden that's light. God, she would trade her yoke that is, is killing her for your yoke that brings life and freedom and joy and peace, God. I pray that you would just lead Lorena. She knows that you're leading her. I pray that she would come to the place where she just surrenders all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So let God help you become who he desires you to be. And it all begins with surrendering your heart to Jesus. But it has to be, you, you'll know when, when God is speaking to your heart and he's telling you to do it, but you gotta do it fast. You gotta do it soon. You can't wait because the longer you wait, the more the devil will come up with thing after thing after thing. He'll say, oh, just do it after this, do it after this. And then 10 years go by and you'll say, how did I, God was working in my life. Why didn't I take him seriously? Why didn't I give him my life? If you put your trust in Jesus and you build your life on him, you, you're building your life on a firm foundation. Nothing can take that away. Nobody in the world can take away living a life built on Jesus Christ. Whatever you build your life on apart from Jesus, it can, as you've seen, it can be removed from you very easily. Your health can be removed, your money can be removed, your family can be removed. The love of God can never, never be removed. Be, neither height nor depth. Nothing can separate you from the love of God when you surrender your heart to Jesus and you become born again. Did you text her? I did. Did, did you it go through? Message? Let's check just because we want to make sure that it uh, went through to you. I uh, Tessia? Yes. Tessia? Yes, Tessia. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Where where do you guys live? You guys live Tucson, Tucson, Arizona. We came Tucson. to preach at the Super Bowl to tell people about Jesus. When, do you do you have a Bible at when home? When I came to the United States, I came through Tucson, Nogales, right? Yes, Tucson, and then yeah. yes, and then LA. Tucson. Oh, why is everything so? What? Huh? No, just, I don't know. Uh, it's just so. How the Lord works, yeah. God. Yeah. When's the last time you read the Bible? Anything in the Bible? I read the Bible a lot and I haven't read it for years. But I remember... Can you read you know, English well yeah, enough? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Not perfect, but yeah, I do. I can understand, yeah. Okay. So later, you know, it only takes four or five minutes to read one chapter of the Bible. You yes, know. I know. Do you have good eyes? You know what you're telling me in, in my mind? It's an image of my Bible there. Do you, you have know? good eyesight or do you wear glasses? You know what? I usually do, but the last days, my 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 sight, it's very blurry. But can you but read this? Can you, if you, you had glasses? Any, no, no, I, no, 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 I, I can see it. Yeah, he's only son, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, so read this. Um, let's see, woman at the well is uh, chapter four right here. Read three, four. Five and five. yeah, and five. Okay. And don't lose it. But I'm telling. 
It'll take you seven to 10 minutes to read that. If you begin to read God's word, he'll fill you. I will, I will. I use, I, I always love to, to, to read the Bible. And right now that you're talking to me, I feel like I, I want to go and read it. Good. Okay. That's God. Amen. Respond. Thank you so much, guys. Respond to God. You're welcome. I do. I do. You're welcome. Thank you, thank you so God much. Bless you. You're God welcome. bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. We love you too. The battery was all for that. Uh, yeah. <laughs>